Hi guys and welcome back to Determined to Praise. Um, so I really hope that you guys um enjoyed the Faith Over Fear um theme. I'm gonna talk about that more um throughout the year because that's really important in that subject. It hits a lot of a lot of different varieties um that we have to deal with throughout life. So I, I pray that you guys are enjoying the videos. I pray that you guys are enjoying this year so far, and that you guys are just having a positive mindset and a positive outlook on everything that's happening, whether it be good or bad things that are going on throughout this year. Remember, everything works for God's good and everything works to give God glory. So just have faith in all that you're going through and all that you have to deal with um, in this year. Um, so today, or you know, for the month of February, I'm going to be talking about love. Um, and so I'm really excited for this and I really hope that you guys get something out of this. Um, for this verse video, I'm just going to talk about love and, you know, what God's love is and what it's about. And the last three ones, we're going to do, um, Q and A's. And so I have two people for Q and A's and I'm going to do one as well. But as I said, I'm very, very excited about this and I hope that you guys enjoy it. And it just gives you a whole new outlook on who God is and about his love. And so, um, first I want to show you guys the shirt that I made because you, you guys know that I made a shirt for the Faith Over Fear um, one and I made the shirt and I showed it to you guys. So, I made a shirt um, and it says, uh, God is love. Let me try to step back so that you guys can see. Um, God is love and it has the Bible scripture there which is First John um, chapter 4 verse 8. Um, and, you know, like I said, I'm just really, really excited. So, um, as I said today, we're going to talk about love and, you know, God is love. So I wrote down the definition for love and it says love is an intense feeling of deep affection, a great interest and pleasure in something like just hearing that definition, a great interest or pleasure, like love. It's such a, a great thing and love. It really helps you conquer all things. And so God, as you know, he loves us. God loves us with a everlasting unconditional love like his love will never change and it just makes me think about people right because us as people our love can be so conditional and you know sometimes we'll stop loving people when they hurt us and sometimes we stop loving people when they do things that we don't like or when they do things that we don't approve of when they do things that we disagree with we, we stop loving people or we stop loving people as much as we used to you know what i mean even with our kids you know we love our kids with everything in us but we get to those points sometimes where we get so frustrated with them or we get so angry with them right but god's love doesn't work that way like it doesn't matter what we do what we say how we act god is going to love us forever like it'll never stop he will always love us and i think that that is really really truly amazing because us as human beings we're just really incapable of loving in that way we're incapable of giving love regardless of the circumstance. So just hearing a great intense, a great interest and pleasure in something. God has a great interest and pleasure in you. He has pleasure in you. He loves you. He sees greatness when he sees you. That to me is just really, really amazing to know that and to know that it's not something that you have to work hard for, that it's there regardless of what you do or don't do. He's going to love you and he will always love you and he'll continue to love you. He sees perfection when he sees you. He sees greatness. And, you know, I compare it to our kids because, like I said, even though we have those moments where we get angry at our kids and we don't want to be around them, for the most part, I will hope, right? <laughs> when you look at your children, you love them. You know, you, you give birth to this thing. You create this thing and you look at it with such precious joy and you're so happy that you created such a magnificent thing like oh my gosh my baby is beautiful and he's gorgeous and this is the most perfect thing i have ever created in my whole entire life i look at this baby and it gives me hope and it gives me joy it gives me happiness it brings me happiness when i look at this beautiful wonderful thing that i have created well just imagine that's exactly what god feels when he looks at you flaws and all because you know you look at your child and you look at all they've been through and all the hurt that they have to endure sometimes in this world and you love your child like that is your baby you will do anything for that child right you know so it's the same way god feels but more because god loves us more than we could ever imagine and he loves our children more than we can imagine he's the only only thing that loves our kids more than we can love them and loves us more than we can love ourselves there's no human being on earth capable of doing that but God loves us just that much regardless. You know, that's the thing that I think gets me is that whether we do right or wrong, he loves us. Good or bad, he loves us. Like that love doesn't change. It doesn't move. Um, and so I wrote down something. Um, it says God's love is the highest form of love. 
It's, it's selfish. It's sacrificial. It's steadfast. It's unchanged. It's unconditional. His love doesn't change. It doesn't move. It doesn't go, oh, you know what? This person isn't doing what I want them to do. They're not following my will. I'm not loving them. Cast them away. Like, that's just it. Like, he still loves you. He's still there. You know, whether you're doing his will or not, you know, he's there with his arms wide open, hoping that you come back and that you return and that you do his will. But his love for you is never going to change. He's going to still want the best for you. He's going to still desire for you to want the best for yourself. Um, And I wrote down a bunch of Bible scriptures. <laughs> A bunch of Bible scriptures, so stay with me, okay? The first one says, above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. First Peter 4 and 8. God wants us to love just as he loves. And no, it's not an easy thing at all. It's very, very hard. But the more you're able to surrender yourself to God, the more you go to him, the more he changes your heart. And I know he's done a number on me, Um, and we'll get into that in next week's video, but and God, he has a way of, of just really changing your heart. And I think it's truly, truly amazing. And, you know, my goal is really to love the way he loves. And like I said, it's not an easy thing, but it's it's possible. All things are possible through Christ. Um, the next one is do everything in love. That's 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Do everything in love. Do everything in love. And I feel like when God is just your main focus, it makes it a little bit easier to do that. As I said, it's, it's not easy, but I feel like when you do things unto God, it makes things a little bit easier because it's not about people or places or things. It's just about simply pleasing him. And it brings you joy in doing that. Um, the next one is, this is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. It's John 15 and 12. Again, not an easy thing to do. But when you think about God and you think about all he's done for you, when you think about the fact that he loved you through things that you couldn't love yourself through, when he loved you, even when you weren't a sinner, when he loved you, even when you weren't following him, he loved you, even when you weren't doing the right things, even when you had bad thoughts, even when you didn't care about other people and you may have been, been mean to other people on this earth, you know, and been rude and you haven't been the best example. God still loved you. He loved you through it all. It didn't stop. Because you weren't doing the right things. God loves us at all times. At every part in our life. Every season that we go through. God is there and God loves us. And that will never change. Um, the next one is. God showed us how much he loved us. By sending his one and only son into the world. So that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we love God. But that he loved us. And he sent his son as a sacrifice. To take away our sins. That's 1 John um, chapter 4, verse 9 through 10. And I mean, it don't get no better than that. Let's just be real. No one on this earth would ever send their child to die for, for the world, you know, especially knowing that there will be people who are not going to care, not going to appreciate what you've done. No one, no one, no one would do that. We're not, we're not doing it out here. We love our babies. I don't know about sacrificing my baby for nothing. I'm just, I'm just saying, right? If we're being honest here, nobody would want to do that. You love your child. That's your baby. You created that thing. You're not going to want to give it away. You know what I mean? But God understood and Jesus understood the the necessary. It was necessary and it was for something bigger, bigger than him. But who was able to love anyone on this earth so much that they sacrifice themselves so that other people can do better? Who 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 loves people that much? A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't. And it's not an easy thing to do. But that just shows you how much God loves us. That he sent his one and only son to die on a cross for our sins so that we may have a second chance. And Jesus, he had to love us enough. He had to love his father enough and love us enough to even be able to get up there and do that. Because he could have walked away and said, no, shoot, I'd have been like, look, God, I know you created me for this, but I don't, I don't know about all that. But he loved us enough. He seen you and he knew I love this person. I'm going to do this for them. They may not understand. They may not even care, but I love them anyway that I'm going to get up there and I'm going to do this. Because what's coming from this is more important. That, that's, that's, that's a love. So a whole different type of love right there. Um, that's a love that, that goes beyond our, our understanding. And I just really couldn't ever imagine it. But that that's that's a deep love right there. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of the scriptures I wrote down are kind of talking about the same thing. Um, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That's John 3.16. That's one of my, that was the first Bible scripture I ever remembered because when I was a kid, um, we would kind of do that at this one little church I went to, the 
the lady there would give me and my brothers Bible scriptures to remember. And when we remembered the scriptures, we would get money for doing it. And so that was actually the first Bible scripture that I ever, that, that's the probably, that's the one and only one that I definitely can recite and know, like definitely for sure. <laughs> um, and here's the next one. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 and 8. Again, we were sinners. We didn't know no better. We didn't really care. Most people who were there in Jesus' time, they didn't care about anything Jesus was saying or believe anything coming out of his mouth. And he died for them too. You're dying for the people who are literally persecuting you. Just, you know, that's just the human mind. It, it, it can never, it can never, it can never, <laughs> it can never. Um, I also wrote down, so I really want you guys, I didn't write down the whole thing for this, but um, you know, if you guys have time, I think it'd be really important if you go back and look at this because it really, really explains how important love is and how important it is for us to have love and what it means to have love because you can do a million and one things on this earth. And the Bible says, if you do not have love, it, it doesn't mean anything. So I'm going to read part of it, but if you guys could go back and read first Corinthians chapter 13 and read the whole thing, it really goes in depth a lot about how important love is. You know that it's important to have love it doesn't matter what you do or don't do on this earth but if you do not have love you do not know god because god is love so <clears throat> i'm going to read first corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 through 7 and this one is kind of a hurt piece because it, it goes into depth still explaining what love is and it kind of make you feel bad because a lot of us have these issues so let's let's just listen for a second love is patient love is kind it does not envy it does not boast it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no account of wrongs. Love takes no pleasure in evil, but rejoices in truth. It bears all things, hope all things, endures all things. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 7. Like I said, the whole thing really goes into depth about how important it is and that if you don't have love, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. But <laughs> love is patient, love is kind, it doesn't envy, it doesn't boast, it's not proud. A lot of these things in here, you know, and we're human. Again, we're human, we're human, we're human. So we're going to have these things, but that's why it's important to go to God and ask him to help change our hearts because how can we be good examples of who Christ is and be great Christians if we're not loving people, loving the people we don't want to love, loving the people who we think are unlovable or who don't deserve, who we think don't deserve our love. That's a really hit you on side the head and let you know, okay, I got to go this a different route because if Jesus did it, then we can do it, right? Jesus loved everybody. He ate with the sinners. It wasn't about who he felt like was worthy of being in his presence. He loved everybody. And so we have to be able to do the same thing. We have to be able to love unconditionally the people who we want to love and people who we don't want to love. But that right there is a hurt piece because y'all, I know I get easily angered. Not even going to sit here and lie about that. I get easily angered. So there's a lot of things that we have to work on in this life, people. And we can do it because, as I said, all things are possible through Christ. So we can do it. We just have to be willing to do it and push our pride to the side and do what God needs us to do. And the last one I wrote down is let us love one another because love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. That is First John chapter 4, verse 7 through 8. You know, I showed you guys my shirt already. God is love. First John 4, 8. So, um, you know, in this, and like I said, it's not a, loving, loving people isn't an easy thing to do. I don't care how long you've been doing this. I think that it's hard for everybody. But like I said, it's important. Um. It's important for us to love. It's very, very, very important for us to love. Um, for, and also, if you guys have a chance, like I said, if you guys can go and read First Corinthians chapter thirteen, the whole thing, um, and First John, um, I didn't even write down the whole thing. I'm gonna have to go back and fix that because I just had First John written down. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's for First John. Chapter 4, verses 7 through 21 is what it's supposed to be, but that's not what it says. Um, but anyway, loving, loving is important. You know, God, God is love, and he's able to love us because he is love. He is the first example of love, and he shows us love by simply being who he is. And so through him giving us love, then we're able to share that love with the world and with other people. And of course, it won't make sense to people because sometimes it doesn't make sense to us how God can love us through anything. And love us just because 
we're here because he's he we're his creation to just love us period like it's really sometimes just mind blowing but i think it's truly amazing and it makes me so happy to know that no matter what i do or don't do there is a god there and he loves me regardless that he looks at me and he sees greatness that i'm his child and that he loves me with his whole heart not part of it not half of it not sometimes but he loves us all the time he loves us daily he loves us every minute of every day. We're on his heart. We're on his mind. And we matter to him. And I think that that's truly amazing. And I really hope that this just really encourages you guys to know that you're loved no matter what you do or don't do. That don't mean just go around doing what you want to do because he loves you. But I'm just saying you're, you're loved regardless. Regardless of how you see yourself or how you see your self-worth or how you feel about yourself. God loves you regardless. And that's never going to change. He's never going to stop loving you. He's never going to stop caring about you. You're going to always matter to him. You're his child. The same way you love your child is the same way God loves you. But more, but more, more than <laughs> you can even imagine. He loves us more and he cares about our happiness. He cares about our peace. He cares about our hearts. So I hope that this really encourages you guys in this new year to know that you're loved. You're on God's heart. You're on his mind and that you matter to him. You know, because love is just really such an important thing. And a lot of times we lack love because we weren't loved right by the people in our houses. You know, our family members, our boyfriends, our girlfriends, our husbands, you know, our friends, our parents, whoever those people are in your life that, that may have hurt you or disappointed you who didn't love you correctly. And, you know, maybe they didn't love correctly because they didn't know what love is because they didn't get love. And it was just a cycle that trickled down. But either way, there is a God who loves you. And if you are able to seek him and if you're able to pray to him, you know, and even if you don't, he loves you, period. But really seeking God and getting an understanding of what love is and feeling that love is an unimaginable, un speakable sense of joy that you get and it's something that you can't have like you will never be able to feel it you can know it but to really get a, a, a feel of it is such an amazing thing and i feel like the more you spend time with god the more, the more that you're able to build a relationship with him <clears throat> the more you can really feel it and really see it you know because like i said it's one thing to know it it's one thing to know it because we all know what is here in the bible it's there but to feel it to live it it's it's unexplainable and it just brings me so much joy and happiness and I just want the world to feel it I want the world to see it I want the world to know it and so I pray that this really encourages you guys um to seek him let him change your heart let him give you his love feel his love embrace his love so that you can share it but the love is just and it brings you so much joy so much happiness so much peace so I pray that you guys stay encouraged that you guys continue to seek God continue to trust in him for your lives Ask him for his love. Ask him to show you his love. Ask him to allow you to experience his love. I mean, you've already experienced it. Just you didn't pay attention and you didn't notice and you didn't understand. You know, we don't pay attention. We're so blind to the things that God is doing because it's not the way we want it to be or how we expect it to look. So a lot of times we don't really take heed to it, but know that he loves you. You're here another day. You're breathing life. You know, you're here. A lot of people didn't make it this far. But you push through. And not only that, but he sent his son on the cross to die for you, for your sins, so that you may live again, so that you may be able to conversate and have a relationship with God through Christ. So I pray that you guys stay encouraged. I pray that you guys know, <clears throat> believe, and feel and see that you are loved because you are. Know that God is love and that the best representation of God is love is for you to love him and to love others the same way he loves you so again stay encouraged um have faith in this new year have trust in god in this new year know that all things are possible through him and love seek his love um have a great day stay encouraged please continue to like share and subscribe and as i said for the rest of this month i am going to be doing q a's i already have the people picked out i pray that you guys stay tuned that you enjoy the q a's and that it really just gives you a better insight on who god is and how his love has changed people have a great day have a great week and stay blessed bye